Okay, I am going to show you some more details about Python in order to create some calculations and do some cool stuff. So in a previous example, I looked at this program and it shows the motion of an object with the constant acceleration. So let's just go through this program real quick and then let's make it better. Okay, so this one here I have line three, I give it initial position, initial time, the velocity, here is the acceleration, notice it's negative, so it starts off with a velocity of 0.45 and it has a negative acceleration, and this is all in one dimension, and then it has a time step of 0.1. So this loop right here does it as long as the time is less than 1.5. Uh, line 10 updates the velocity, line 11 updates the position, line 12 updates the time, and then after it gets to 1.5 seconds it prints out X, and we get that right there. Okay, there's a couple things in here that I'm skipping over. I assume you've looked at something like this before. Um, first, let me point out up here, I, I wrote down where and when will the object stop. That's what we want to find out, okay? And that's just a comment. If you put a number sign, or as my kids like to say, hashtag, uh, in front of something, it will the computer will ignore it. Uh, okay, so the first thing I want to do is... I. I could solve this problem by just saying, okay, it didn't, it did it stop. So instead of printing the velocity, the position, I'll print the velocity. And it, it's not stopped. So I could run it for even longer. Uh, let's say uh, 2.5 and run it again. And now it's going backwards. So somewhere in between um, those two, I could keep changing it until this is zero. And then I could print out the time and I could print out the position and that would answer the question. And that's a fine way to answer the question. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's another way to do it. Okay, let's do this. What if I indent print, and I'll print V. So what this does is the loop right here works by doing everything that's indented until that's no longer true. So by printing this, every time it does a calculation, it's gonna print the velocity. So let's run, all I did was indent print. Let's run it again. And you'll see here, it goes through all these velocities until it gets down here. Uh, but now I don't know what, that's the time between these two, it stopped. But I don't know the, I don't know the time. Okay, so I could do something like this. Oh, I'll just print out the time. And then now it's even more confusing because it goes position, velocity, time, velocity, time. So I could figure it out, but it's it's frustrating. So let's do this one other way. Let's do it like this. This is a, a better way to print. Print uh, V equals comma V, comma, and let's even put the units per second, I mean the meters per second, and then we'll put, let's put a space here. Let's put a colon, and then, and a space. And then I'm going to put, um, oh, I don't need this. I'm done. Okay. And then T equals comma T comma seconds. Close parentheses. So that's going to print out this string V equals the velocity in meters per second and the time. So if I run it again, there, doesn't it look nicer? So now if I get to V, right around here, T equals 2.2 seconds is where, where it stopped. Okay, and I could print out the position too, and everything would be great, but it's still kind of annoying. And there's other ways to fix this problem. So, the best way to do this, though, is with the graph. So let me show you how to make a graph. There are lots of ways to make graphs. Um, I'm going to show you the way that, that is the simplest. The first thing you need to do is make a graph object. I'm going to call it, you can give it whatever name you want, and it is an object of type graph, and then I can give it a title, my graph. There's different parameters I can call in this function. This graph thing is built in. It's, it's already there because of GlowScript 2.7 vPython. Then I can give it an x title equals time in seconds. And then I can give it a Y title. And let's plot the position versus time. So position 
in meters. And that's that's fine. Okay, that's just, if I do that, it's not going to look great. Let's just get rid of this print statement. Let's dedent that, print it at the end, and run this. So there's nothing there because I didn't, I didn't tell it to plot anything. So I need to also make a function that I plot. Let's call this f1 for function 1. And it is of type, um, let's say, g dots. That's another reserved uh, object. And we can give it parameters. I'm just going to give it a color. Color equals color dot blue. And again, let me run it because you'll see nothing really happens. Nothing really happened. But I need to add something to the plot. So down here, I've made a plot, but it didn't show it because it didn't, doesn't have anything. So in the loop, I need to add a data point to the graph. So I do that by saying f1.plot, and then I give it the x, the horizontal coordinate, which is t, and the vertical coordinate, which is x. Now let's run it. There you go. Look at that. My, see, isn't that pretty? I'm just kind of happy. That's just pretty cool. Okay. Um, if I want to make it dots with lines connected to them, I can, or I could do this, g curve, and now it's a, just connects all the dots. Um, I kind of like the dots better. You can do it both at the same time, but don't worry about it. Uh, you could change the color. Let's change it to red just because, you know, that's cool. And then actually you can see here just by looking where the stop, where the slope of this line is the velocity and goes to zero. So it's right around here, around that's around 2.15 seconds. You can get an approximate time. Um, okay, let's, let's plot velocity versus time. I'm just going to change this to V. And actually, I'm going to go up here, change this to meters per second. Velocity. Run it. And that's, you know, the velocity is decreasing at a constant rate because it's constant acceleration. That's exactly what we'd, we'd expect. Okay, but you can see by making a graph, it gives you more power over what's going on. It makes it more useful, and you can do all sorts of things. So, there's more to learn, but that's just a short introduction to graphs to get you started in numerical calculations. The end.